Hi, welcome to chapter 21, part 2 of the UVM Primer code videos. Uh, my name is Ray Salemi and I'm the author of the UVM Primer and we're going to be looking at the code that's used as examples in chapter 21 of the book, the UVM Primer. In the first part, we took our data and we defined it in terms of classes, such as command transaction here, and we talked about how to create a transaction. In this part, we're going to use that information. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to remember that our test bench asks us to have a random trans a random test and an add test. And so to implement that add test, we're going to use this command transaction. Uh, and we're going to in extend it to create an add transaction. The add transaction just extends command transaction and we put it in the factory. And the only difference is that we changed the constraint. We added one constraint so that the operation has to be equal to add op. And now when this uh, transaction gets randomized, it will always create an add operation. And we'll see how we use that later on. And again, we've got the, uh, the simple object constructor here, put all in one line with semicolons. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at the tester. Now, we used to have a base tester class, and we would extend that to create a random tester and an add tester. Uh, we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, now we just need a tester because the question about whether or not we're going to be doing add tests or random tests is not stored in the tester anymore. It's stored in the transaction, specifically in the transactions constraints. So here we have our tester, which extends UVM component, and we're going to jump down to the run phase. We've already looked at this command port and the put port and all of that communication stuff. Uh, when we jump down to the run phase, the first thing we do is we define a variable of type command transactor, tr transaction, and we create one. So here's a command transaction. We set the operation to reset up, and we put it into the test bench, and now it'll do a reset. Uh, then we create another command transaction, and we do this so that we don't interfere with the one we just put into the test bench, because remember, we're holding a handle to a, a transaction, and this command variable is holding a handle to the transaction we just sent into the test bench with the reset op. Uh, we don't want to interfere with that, so we're making a new one right here. And notice that we're using the factory to create this transaction. That actually will become important later on. So we use the factory to create a transaction. Uh, we repeat 10 times. We randomize that transaction, and we put it into the test bench, and then we loop around on this. So we just keep going around and around, uh, and uh, that transaction goes down to, through the test bench. We, we happen to know that no one's going to mess with this transaction, and if they are going to mess with it, then they're going to copy it first. So we don't really have to um, create multiple transactions here. We'll just uh, use one handle all the way through. Finally, we decide to do a mull up, so we create another, another command, we set the operation, and we put that one in so that we can get the maximum operation and then, and then we drop out. So now our, our uh, tester is much simpler. It's just a matter of creating transactions and putting them into the test bench through the, uh, through the put port. Now, w on the other side, we want to look at our monitor uh, information. So if we look at our command monitor. Remember, the command monitor provides a uh, method called write to monitor that the BFM uses to write data back to us. And the BFM sends us A, B, and op. And what we do here is we create a, a command transaction as well, like we did before, and we stuff it with A, B, and op, and then we put it into the analysis port. Now the analysis port is, uh, is handling um, command transactions instead of command S structs. So it's the same system, just with a different piece of data being passed through it. And that's how we do the uh, command monitor. Uh, the result monitor is sim similar. Uh, we get the result information from right to monitor. We create a result transaction. We put the result, uh, the data into the result transaction, and we write that to the analysis port. Now, and you'll notice now how this object-oriented programming is allowing us not to think about other parts of the test bench. We just handle one little job. And we do it ourselves. Uh, the scoreboard is a little bit different. Uh, it now uh, it still has an analysis FIFO that receives the command. And it's still a, um, a subscriber, but now it's a subscriber of type result transaction, not of type result. So it doesn't receive a uh, it doesn't receive the um, it doesn't receive the data directly as a short end. It receives a transaction that contains the data. 
if we go down here and look at our prediction, our our uh, our, our comparer, uh, we uh, receive a result transaction, and then we get commands out of the uh, out of the FIFO. Here we check to see that the operation of those commands is not a no op, and we we keep cycling through this do while loop until we get a real command. Then we create a predicted result. Now notice I have a predict result um, method right here. Uh, so we pass that method the command and it gives us the predicted result. So it encapsulates that case statement. Um, we print things, we create a data string. Uh, remember we saw earlier we print this out to the screen with a UVM error if they don't match and we, uh, we put them out uh, if we set UVM high as the verbosity we always put out the result. And notice here we're using the compare method of UVM transaction, so we're saying compare predicted to T, and we're passing T as an argument into that compare method. That's calling the do compare that we wrote earlier and doing the comparison. Finally, uh, we see that we want to uh, create a test. Uh, now we have two tests. Uh, we have the random test, and all the random test does is create the environment. Everything that you, the, that's needed to do the test is in that environment. So in creating this environment. Uh, we are basically setting things up for this test to run. If we want to do the add test, then now all we have to do is we do the same thing. We, uh, we, we extend random test and we override the command transaction, which remember was a randomized transaction. We override the command transaction with the add transaction. So now we're saying that in this test, when someone tries to create a command transaction, they're going to get an add transaction and then we called super.build phase so that the random test uh, continues and creates the environment like it did before. But we know that we've changed all the transactions to add transactions, and so now we have an add test. So again, we get to see smaller and smaller pieces of the test bench doing simpler and simpler things uh, now that we're moving into transaction level modeling.